If you enjoy sea animals and bee crafts, then this is a win, because in this video, we're making a bee dolphin. The bee dolphin is another fun bee design that's easy as can be, the perfect pattern of these friendly mammals from under the sea. This bee pet will keep you happy and chipper with its unique look, strong fins, and flippers. So get ready for a tutorial that'll satisfy your creative needs. Let's be sure to give this video a like and enjoy this episode of Turbo Beads. Here's the list of everything you need to make the bee dolphin. Making the bee dolphin, the first thing you'll need to do is to take three and a half feet of string and add one blue bead to the string. Now that you have that bead on the string, we'll take each end of string, matching them up. With both ends of string matched up, you can now push that blue bead toward the center of the string. This will be the first row of the pattern, giving us the same length of string to use on both sides. Be sure that this bead stays in the center of the string to ensure we have the same amount of string to use on both sides for creating rows. Creating a row is pretty simple. You'll take one end of the string and you'll add two beads to the string. Now that we have those beads on the string, you'll take your other end of string and run it through all of those beads as well, going in the opposite direction. With the string through both ends of those beads, you'll pull both ends of the string until you've reached the top, bringing all of the beads together. With the second row finished, creating the next row is just as simple as the previous row. You'll take one end of the string and you'll add your beads to the string. For this row, we'll have one white bead and three blue beads. With those beads on the string, you'll take your other end of string and you're gonna run it through all of those beads as well, going in the opposite direction. Watch closely as I guide the string to these beads. When you have that string through those beads, you'll pull both ends of the string until you've reached the top. As a quick tip, if you're having a hard time keeping the rows of beads straight, you can always run a toothpick in between any of these rows of beads. This will reinforce the row, keeping the beads straight, aligned, and in place, also keeping these beads in a tight formation. Just be sure to break off the ends of the toothpick to keep the stick from showing through the sides. Also, be careful if you decide to use this technique, because some of the sticks may be sharp and pointy. Don't let them stick you. <laughs> now that we have this row finished, we'll continue repeating these same steps when creating additional rows for this pattern. Remember, you'll take one end of the string, and you're going to add your beads to the string. Once you have your beads on the string, you'll take your other end of string, and you're going to run it through all of those beads as well, going in the opposite direction. Once you have that string through all of those beads, you'll pull both ends of the string until you've reached the top. So just continue repeating these steps, creating additional rows, following the pattern as seen at the top of the screen. As you can see, creating this pattern so far should be pretty easy, with its simple steps of creating rows that'll make up the main part of the dolphin's body with these two colors of blue and white that divide the upper and lower half of the body as well. You may already know that the natural color of a real life dolphin is gray and may appear to look blue when under the water, or only in the movies and cartoons. But I've decided to just go ahead and use blue for this one. Of course, you always have the freedom to use whatever color you want for your dolphin. Will you go with gray or blue, or will you go with an entirely different color? The creative options are always in your hands. Leave a comment below letting me know what color scheme you decide to use. The 11th row will be the beginning of the tail. You will also see that the previous rows of beads will be in the shape resembling the dolphin of course. As you can see, the 11th and 12th row will only have one bead per row. So when you finish these two rows, the 13th row will have two beads and be the start of the back flipper, which is actually called a fluke. With the 13th row finished, it's time to make the flippers of the fluke. To make the flipper, you'll take one end of the string and you'll add three beads to the string. Now that we have those beads on the string, you'll go ahead and run those beads toward the top. Using that same end of string, we're gonna run that string back through the first two beads added to that string, with the string going in the direction away from the main pattern. Watch closely as I guide the string through these beads. 
when you get that string through those beads, you'll hold those two beads down in place, pulling the string all the way through until the beads come together, just like this. This is exactly how it should look so far. Once again, we're going to use that same end of string, and we'll run that string back through the first bead on the 13th row, with the string going in the direction away from the main pattern. Just watch closely as I guide the string through this bead. Once you have that string through that bead, you'll pull the string all the way through until the beads come together looking just like this. Be sure to keep those beads in a tight formation to ensure that it stays in a desired shape. Again, this is what it should look like. With the first flipper finished, we are ready to create another flipper to complete the fluke of the dolphin tail. Using the same steps as we've done before, we'll take the other end of string and we'll add three beads to the string, running those beads toward the top. Using that same end of string, we're going to run that string back through the first two beads that were added to the string, with the string going in the direction away from the main pattern. Watch closely as I guide the string through these beads. When you get the string through those beads, you'll hold those two beads in place, pulling the string all the way through until the beads come together, looking just like this. Now, we'll take that same end of string and run it back through the second bead here on the 13th row, with the string going in the direction away from the main pattern. Again, watching closely as I guide the string through this bead. Once you get that string through that bead, you'll pull the string until the beads come together, creating the desired shape. Remembering to keep those beads in a tight formation to ensure that it stays in shape. With this flipper finished, we can now tie off both ends of string with knots to keep everything locked in place. When tying the string together, be sure that your knots are tied nice and tight, solid and secure, to ensure that everything stays together. With this visual reference, tying a knot should be pretty easy to figure out. As you can see here, this is what it should look like. As I've said before, you're tying off each end of string with a knot that's tied nice and secured. Once you have both ends of string tied and everything is locked into place, you'll carefully cut off the tied loose ends of string. Now that the tied loose ends are cut, we finish the main part of the body. This is what it should look like so far, but we aren't done just yet. Now, we'll need to create the fins of this dolphin so that he can swim. So to make a fin, you'll take 6 inches of additional string, matching up the ends. I'll be using fishing line for mine. Next, you'll add one bead to the string, letting that bead fall toward the center of the string. Now, you'll take one end of the string and add two beads to that string. From here, you'll take your other end of string and run it to those two beads as well, going in the opposite direction. Once you get that string through those beads, you'll pull both ends of the string until the beads come together, looking just like this. Be sure that these three beads stay in a tight formation to ensure that they retain the shape of the fin. From this point, you'll take each end of string, running the string through the gaps at the bottom of the sixth row. That's one end of string on each side of the sixth row. So just watch closely as I guide the string through these points. With this visual reference, it should be pretty clear and easy to see. When you have both ends of string through these points, you'll pull both ends of string so that the beads come together. At this point, you'll want to be sure that the string is pulled tight enough to ensure that the beads stay in a tight formation, maintaining the shape of the fin. Now that this fin is all set, we can now tie the string together with a square knot to keep everything locked into place. Be sure that your knot is tied tight and secured, ensuring that everything stays in place. Feel free to tie your knot as many times as you feel is necessary. Remember, you want to ensure that this all stays together. Now that the knot is tied and all the beads are all locked into place, you'll carefully cut off the tied loose ends of string and you've finished one fin. Here is what it should look like. With the pectoral fin finished, let's create the dorsal fin which is on the top here. To make the fin, again, you'll take 6 inches of additional string, matching up the ends and adding a bead to the string letting it fall toward the center of the string. Now, you'll add two beads to the string. 
once you have those beads on the string, we're going to take the other end of string and we're going to run it through those beads as well, going in the opposite direction. Once you get that string through those beads, you'll pull both ends of the string until the beads come together. This is what it should look like. Remember to be sure that those three beads stay in a tight formation to ensure they retain the shape of the fin. From this point, you'll take each end of string and run the string through the gaps on the top of the eighth row. Again, that's one end of the string on each side of the eighth row. Once you get the string through these points, you'll pull both ends of string together and all the way through until the beads come together. Remember to be sure that these three beads stay in a tight formation by keeping the string tight as well. Tie the string together with a square knot that's tied tightly and secured, ensuring that everything stays together and locked into place. Now that your knot is tied and the beads are all locked into place, you can carefully cut off the tied loose ends of string. And at this point, if you have a lanyard hook, you can attach it to any point of this pattern. With that hook attached, your bead dolphin is now complete. And there you have it, another perfect bead animal design that was easy to make. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful and you can create one just as great. If there's anything you'd like to add, requests or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment below. And if you are new or you just haven't already, don't forget you can always subscribe if you want to be notified for more bead tutorials just like this one. Hoping you'll tune in for the next one to satisfy your creative needs. Until next time, as always, thanks for watching Turbo Beads.